Okay, so you're ready? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Here goes. Okay, I'm out. I'm a little outside, Dave, but I'm gonna come underneath. Yeah, and he got me. Got that? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Pop, 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 pop. Boy, did he come screaming up at that, eh? Oh, that was fantastic. Awesome, man. Thank you. That's super cool. Boy, did he come screaming for that, eh? Thank you. Awesome. Ah, that's so fun, guys. I love that stuff. Absolutely love that stuff. All right, Gate. He's ready for the net. And. In you come. Yeah, so fun. Woohoo! Hey guys, so welcome to another video here and today we're out on just a small mountain stream um, Water levels are really low. Hey? Oh crazy. Yeah crazy low right now And uh, it's actually also relatively cool today compared to what we've had. We're oh. like like 21 degrees as a high today Yeah, and we have a front moving in and it's gonna start raining later this afternoon this evening And it's only supposed to be 13 above which you know, uh, US fellows is mid 50s with just a drizzling rain tomorrow so today is a changeover day and yeah. because the water is so low and so clear the fish have uh, i bet you any money the fish have dropped out most of them yeah and quite a few. leaving maybe one fish here and there every you know a couple of few hundred yards we'll find a fish yeah today it's all about just finding that one guys and you know we've stepped it right down to 5x um and we'll just be looking in all of that water where you've got depth and flow that's all about that that's really what we're yeah, going for yeah. right obviously there's yeah. going to be the odd fish in a pools around some of these log jams but those are going to be the project fish because they're going to go round and round yeah. and round and, yeah <laughs> cycle <laughs> cycle cycle right so we're, hopefully yeah. we're going to find some fish set up on shelves and troughs that yeah. kind of stuff yeah and always our hope is to maybe find one that we can film and who knows we may get lucky and get a green, green drake or two to come off yeah and, it's early yet so yep. let's the other day plays out on that level hey exactly guys as always we really appreciate it if you're interested please subscribe to this channel we have you know a couple of videos every week coming out and we'll continue to provide that content for you so do subscribe and right in line with that if you find value and you want to support us because we get a lot of questions by people asking how can we support you well YouTube has this little thing called super thanks and it's a little bit of money here and there you'll see the button right underneath the right side of this video if you feel you know if you have value if you if you've learned something or you see what we're doing here and want to support it and make sure that this keeps going please we appreciate your support okay it's coming back coming over I'm on. are you on him yeah. okay here I go Dave that has a good chance if he wants to come over at all depends which way he's gonna go here here he comes yeah, nice. 
Awesome, beautiful, hey? I <laughs> just had to wait guys till he came to the tail out. That's where we wanted to come together so Dave could get him on camera and I could get him on the dry fly because that's exactly where he'd been rising. Come on, bud. Yeah, nice fish, really nice fish. <laughs> just did, didn't it? Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's, no, 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 no. Come on, you need to stay out of there, bud. Yeah, there we go. Come on, stay on it. Mel's here. Yeah. Yeah, hey, but. Oh, yeah, right? And. Oh, it's amazing. Absolutely. Beautiful fish, though. Just gorgeous. <laughs> Crazy that he's the only one in this pool, yeah. right? Wow. Well, guys, I really enjoyed that one. Uh, that fish, you know, it's funny, earlier in the year, there was probably three or four fish in this pool. Now, super low water conditions. He's the only one, which is still a little surprising to me because it still screams that it would have another fish or two. Um, but no, it was just him. And it was all a matter of timing that because Dave and I wanted to work together. He was on the camera. We knew we could get this fish on the dry fly. He had risen a couple times in the only patch of sun that we had had when we first arrived. Um, the rest of the time he just spent, you know, up cruising right up to, you know, where there's kind of this, you know, drop off zone. And he was just nymphing away, nymphing away. And we had to wait until he wanted to, to drop out a bit to the tail out again. And yeah, hey, one cat. It was funny because again, uh, interestingly enough today, it's been again, wait with that fly because it drifted for quite a while and it hung there until he saw it. And again, you know, some slightly deeper pools, that's a situation. You've got to give it time for that fish to get into his spot where he sees it. And, and yeah, and then great take, beautiful fish. Oh, it's so lovely. Man. Yeah, it's that thing that we talk about lots. The seasons of a stream. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. No, just the, like, the whole sidewalk thing too, hey? Yeah. Like this flat gravel, flat yeah. rock. And flat yeah, rock. Nothing to hold. when you wonder where there's, why there's no fish, when their water's flowing over top of this stuff, well, where are they, what are they holding to? Yeah. And that's yeah. one of the things that we have to pay attention to when it comes to, hmm, where are the fish? Yeah. Sidewalks don't break much current for fish that's for sure they have to have a yeah. drop they have to have bigger rock they have to have structure anything along this so we're just yeah. going to walk along the deep stuff and just look for fish today and we're just we're looking for movement gray green maybe some blue maybe yellow <laughs> yeah they do have a bit of a yellowish tinge some of those lighter cutthroats you know? yeah. yeah so ah, we'll just keep looking not highly expecting here just because of the folding moving flipping turning over spiraling effect doesn't often lead to good fish water it's funny hey with the the pulsing of the light in here i'd rather just have it flat gray cloud than oh, than yeah. pulsing sun because you can't see ah and now when that goes away it's perfect yeah. and then the sun comes back out and it sucks and it was light, it was dark. It was light, it was dark. It was like, yep. <laughs> okay, so do I fish? Do I look? Do I prospect it? Do I wait for a cloud? And how long until that cloud comes over? Up, way over. Next time he comes where he was, let me know that you're on him. And I'll go for him, okay? No, up. There he is, right by that stick. And that next bug? Did he actually rise? Almost. <laughs> Almost rose. Now he's right where he was. Okay. Just a little deeper. Oh yeah, I got him. He's glowing. I'm just gonna wait for the wind to settle down so I can actually do something with this, hey? Yeah. I'm waiting for him to show here again. There he is. There we go. That's gotta have a chance, doesn't it? Come up. No. He chased an imp under. It's gonna leave it there. Here he comes. Yep. Okay. That was awesome. As an aside, you should have been on that. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Oh yeah. 
I bet. That's awesome. Look at that, hey? Eh? Gorgeous spot. What a gorgeous spot in the world for that to happen. Hmm. Come on, little buddy. Get that net wet, and in we go. Gorgeous fish. Came right up on that. Whew. Okay, here we are. So that fish was really gorgeous. When we walked up and looked across at that little intern bucket pocket, uh, just a beautiful spot. I saw that, that fish come up, flag, little tail, and go back down. We saw it rise one other time, and we made the call not to go tight on the camera because it was, oh, is it going to take the dry? Where is it going to? Really funky wind and current. But of course, as luck would have it, when I put my dry in there, the fish went down into the logs feeding, and then it came back, and my fly just stayed there. <laughs> and then, from my vantage, it was one of those epic, just right up, slow torpedo, mouth open, close, turn. Just a classic cutthroat. And the thinking on that one was kind of a, not a true green drake size emerger, but something between kind of a PMD and a green drake, somewhere in that ballpark and with 5x and just kind of a smaller emerging mayfly if it's willing to come up it's probably going to eat a mayfly emerger and what do you know there we go and that's not great sorry guys but that's just a deer hair well an elk hair post um basically a little bit of antron as a as a, a trailing shuck and it's just basically hairs through the body with a light copper fine copper wrap with a little bit of brown hackle about three or four wraps of that and that thing just basically is your little emerger so we've only fished this creek a couple summers and we've yet to see a fish in amongst all this down and, and down wood but at these flows this is prime water for them uh, to hunker in and just find a little pocket and just be happy but again same equation if they're going to be here, they have to be in that little dead water pocket just on the edge of the current because that bottom is still shingly and offers no current break. So as we go, there is no fish there again. Surprise. Okay, as we come along here, um, again, shingly sidewalk bottom, but those trees over there and what I'm doing is, is I'm, I'm only expecting a fish to come out to feed and then go back in the calm water over there. Not a great spot in the world, but we've caught them before, but usually um, in here, just outside of the main flow on this side. So it's a little bit of a, because the water's so low, it's really pushing the flow right in and everything's just a causeway through here right now. And that's kind of iffy, but we're really looking for shapes and smudges and movement all along that stuff. No, that wind doesn't help, but what are you going to do? Slow down and look harder and make sure you cover the water. Uh, you could prospect, absolutely you could prospect with dry dropper, that kind of thing. But we want to see so we can set up on the camera. And that's a likely spot, but that smudge is not in there i'm not seeing anything at all for movement so no rises no movement no fish and i'm just going to have a look up here and then we're going to get going up to the next pocket where there should be a fish he's right on the in oh, no. he's right on the inside right yeah. by that red rock yeah, see him coming to the right yeah okay i'm gonna get on that dude. okay speaking at all on his right that's Lots not a problem to at all like i'd be on that fish okay well let's try this then hey yeah why not i'll try to i'll try to keep it to his right and try to draw him okay. and we'll see what happens you let me know when you're yeah, you ready yeah. well let's try this it'll be short to start hopefully here we go right on him come up yep no, he slashed and refused oh, last second. That was a crazy yep, hit. he slashed and refused last second. Okay, f fair enough. It's funny because after last summer in here, <laughs> seeing that kind of action, and you know it's a last second refusal on the fly, just coming right up to it and then going like this and follow through with the tail, and that's what smacked my fly. So I uh, didn't like it. All right, so wow, okay, so now it's windy. Crazy windy. Awesome. It's that kind of day. Weather change day. Front coming in. And... 
So because that fish refused my previous dry fly, I've now gone over to an elk hair caddis and down about a foot and a bit, just the old hare's ear with a copper tail. And we're gonna just gonna have a go at that. And we'll see if I can even get this in here. My guess is the, the, the dropper nymph is what's gonna get the fish if he wants to eat again. Gonna do it. There we go. Wow, I couldn't get the zone. And that, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, he took the nymph. <laughs> he came up after that went through and he came up and upstream at the fly. That's awesome, that was amazing to watch. Wow, that's crazy that he did that. I couldn't hit the zone for the drift, but he came to me. Hey, anytime they wanna to come to you to say hi de ho, that's awesome. What a gorgeous spot for that fish to be. Whew. Yeah, that's exciting. I think at the end of the day, he actually saw a tiny bit of movement in that nymph. Yep. And that's where you it. I guarantee it. Yeah. Wasn't that awesome to watch? Really cool, Dave. Oh. Yep. <laughs> oh, how exciting was that? Well, that one was really exciting. Just want to walk over. Look how small this is, hey? Like you go, this is a rod length across. That seam is nowhere near a rod length across. That main current is probably six feet across. And that fish came up right where my rod tip was and just smoke refused that, uh, that green tray emerger pattern. And I was like, yeah, I've seen that before. You know that's a refusal. When they boil and smash, again, it's just that, that head's coming up, coming up, coming up, last second turn, and that's that foosh with that tail coming through it's like yeah okay he doesn't want that you'd think you'd eat it but there's been enough pressure and the water's so low and so clear it was like okay fine i'm gonna change and that's when smaller elk hair caddis with about a 15 inch dropper on 5x about a size what the heck size is that little nymph oh geez where is that little nymph yeah there it is no, that's a little size 16 nymph. Again, just a hair's ear with a copper tail with a little tungsten bead. And it was really cool because I put that fly there and this little backhead, he kind of brought it the wrong way. Well, it started drifting away from the fish and the fish said, uh, 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 uh. And he came swimming up and he could just see this shape coming upstream of the water column up to my fly. And my, I, I thought, there's no way I'm going to see the mouth from my angle. So I had to rely on that dry fly just to go dink. And it went tink, and I set the hook, and it was like, yeah, that is cool fun. Okay. See if that gets down to him. That's not going to get anywhere near down to him in time. No, he's right on the bottom. The only way is to maybe lead him out here, intersect in the shallow, shallow, shallow stuff, but he's still going to be way deeper than what I am. Is he going to break this way? Yeah, he is actually. This has a chance. He just has to come up a foot. Here we go. That was him. Right through. He came up, opened his lips. You see that? Yep, did. That was awesome. Isn't that amazing? That's what it's going to take to catch this fish. 5X size 18. All right. So he's in patrol mode, so let's put it up in here, just at the top end of his uh, assumed to be patrol zone. He's up by the log there. I'm just out. I'm hoping he's going to go up and button hook like he has been, but we'll see. Got to see the fish. Where'd he go? Here he comes. Have a look. There we go. Yeah, I just by mouth. You are never ever gonna see the dry fly move on that that was all about watching the fish come around cycle observe his cycle and intercept that oh there he goes <laughs> that's actually okay because what happened what happened there was okay now i've got whatever that length of leader is but you knew that fish was going to cycle all the way up and around and up and around and you also knew that he was willing to come up a foot or maybe two and in that it turns out to be really cool because you can just see that fish come out from that log and the unfortunate thing was that was straight at me. So it was, I saw this white mouth open, close, set the hook. And you try to set up or you try to offset the direction that he's actually traveling. 
but at the end of the day, it's still at you. And anytime, in this case, I have a size 18 little nymph, I changed it from that pheasant tail slender thing to um, an even smaller size 22 egg shank, uh, kind of a red body pheasant tail for lack of anything else description. And just has a little pearl, two little strands of pearl flash as a tail. And when you go size 20 with a little tungsten, well, the fish that's going to cycle out right at you on 5x, well, you know, you can get the take and you can also lose, lose the fish. So anytime it's straight at you, it's always bad news or sometimes it works out. Let's keep going. So guys, we've got again a whole bunch of down trees, but we have a decent amount here of trough and some inflow. So I'm just looking, been looking really closely all the way along this down log tight to it. Of course, from further back, I was looking right along the edge of these rocks where it meets the sand. And up ahead there, there is a bit of a smudge. I'm trying to get a little closer um, in behind a big creamy rock. I don't think it is. The closer I'm getting, the more I'm eliminating it. But again, as I round this corner, you never know where there could be a trout that's holding literally right at the front of this stump. So I'm just going to slowly move around it, keeping a good eye. Again, he could be cruising, right? Now, as I come up here to meet up with Dave too, I can show you this, what the water right in front of us here. And you know, there's actually a number of spots that are possible. Again, not a tons of flow and I haven't heard from Dave yet that he's spotted anything. But the reality is, is not only do you have depth right where I'm pointing, where, you know, these slightly bigger rocks come down, they do end up meeting with that line of sand out in there. But you know, there could be a fish holding up towards the head of it. Again, there could also be fish if you look across the way here, get us a little closer, we've got an in-stream log, right? And underneath that log is some really great um, depth and trough, again, with some bigger rock. And I, I would put a fish over there um, in these really low conditions. I haven't seen anything show itself yet, but it's definitely a possible spot. But Dave has said, no, he's looked and we're moving on. This is really cool, guys. So again, we have just a trickle of water here off my left. And this trout is holding nice and tight, you know, to the bank. He's only maybe a foot out from the bank. And we just, Dave just picked him up, really good eye as we were coming up. Um, we were standing actually pretty close to this log and he's right out from the log underneath there's an overhanging willow there I've got to try to get my flies to drift in just above the old overhanging willow and see if he will take in that spot because he's hanging and you can just see him when he covers um, a white rock in there you can see a shape so it's kind of cool I got to get down on my knees and see if I can get the right cat drift uh, into him okay so you're ready yes excellent Okay. Okay. Here goes. Okay, I'm out. I'm a little outside, Dave, but I'm gonna come underneath. Yeah, he got me. Got that? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Boy, did he come screaming up at that, eh? Oh, that was fantastic. <laughs> awesome, man. Thank you. That's super cool. Boy, did he come screaming for that, eh? Thank you. Awesome. awesome. Ah, that's so fun, guys. I love that stuff. Absolutely love that stuff. All right, Gate, he's ready for the net. And in you come. Yeah, so fun. Woohoo! Yeah, so cool. Boy, he came. I was not expecting him to come that far, but boy, did he charge. He was moving off. Yeah. There we go. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. Great pickup, by the way. Oh, Thanks for spotting him. Yeah, beautiful spot. Well, guys, you're gonna see just how skinny a water that fish is in. As I'm getting closer, you can see, 
it literally the the river right here is about maybe two rod lengths across so not much to it right and yeah absolutely loved it i got myself literally squatted down right at my rod tip <laughs> and i knew where that fish was and honestly i wasn't expecting it to come charging like that quite per se but he wanted it and he was going to eat and i knew the moment that i put on a caddis pattern that fish was going to come i mean it this this particular spot it has just enough flow to it and enough depth um, it's hard to describe the flow but you know it's that kind of flow where if you look at the surface of the water it's just got those tiny little waves it almost looks like the vermiculations to be honest on the back of a brook trout i know that's very random but that's what it looks like to me actually is it just has this a little bit of wave action and that always tells me hey you put a caddis in that kind of water for cutthroat or a cut bow in this case they're gonna come and yeah honestly I would have liked my fly to land about eight inches further over but it didn't matter that fish is coming no matter what that was actually shocking hey it was, it was actually shocking because I, I, I got to just right across from them and I was right here yeah and I went oh no and I thought I'd already pushed it for you so I got right here yeah. and I, that's when I saw the, that green brown smudge and you can see the color of that green brown smudge on the release when that fish is swimming into the depths of the water have a look at what that color is because that's what the color of the smudge is that I'm looking for yes. in this water and I just saw a horizontal bar of that kind of gray green and I was like yeah that's got fins lower side yeah a, a fish no, yes in that water can, can't not be a fish that's so. right and because again guys i said it's only you know literally maybe two rod lengths width um apart this this entire river from bank to bank um it's surprising just how deep it is over here oh, yeah. believe it or not i mean you know right now i'm ankle but if i were to go right into where that fish is it's probably easily thigh to maybe waist deep so that's the neat thing and that's the deceptive thing about clear water. But wow, ton of fun on that one. Sure that was a rise. <laughs> so neat guys, we just Oh saw. there you went. See? Yeah. See the rings? Yeah, I sure do. He's oh, yeah. right underneath that spruce tree. Oh how are we gonna get in there? <laughs> right ahead. Well we're gonna draw him out of course. <laughs> with the caddis you think oh no, again. i think so how big is it though? i don't know that's what i'm trying to figure out i haven't seen a head at think, all do you think, do you... yeah teeny tiny i don't know i'm not seeing a tail it's usually on those bigger white than rocks. Think, though. that's the problem that's it it's just it yeah he's this big if <laughs> not even okay we're gonna leave him alone he was barely oh, grazing the like surface this guy, right this guy's only oh as well, yeah so. yeah we're gonna leave those guys alone yeah no we don't need to catch those babies Is he coming in? Oh, he's dropping. I'm not moving. Let him turn. Oh, what a gorgeous eat. You ready? Ready there? Okay, here we go, Dave. Here we go. He refused it. Hang tight.
Ooh. Here we, no, doesn't want that. Okay. All right. Here we go, Dave. Yeah. Oh, oh. Came to eat something. Shoot, shoot. Don't know where he is now. That was just before I landed. Don't got him. He's deeper, isn't he? I don't no. Know. I don't have him on your fly. Is yeah. You behind you, please? Yeah, I'm about to do that. Yeah. You're on him? Still on him. Okay. Here we go, Dave. Oh, he looked and eat it. Yeah, came and take the dry in the end. Good grief, eh? Timing. Timing, timing. Unreal. That's awesome. Oh, no, that was gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, eh? I was freaking out on the camera because I'm not on the I get that. Yeah. I came back around on the, on the dry and I was like, yeah, I got time for that. Yeah, no doubt, hey? Beautiful. Beautiful fish. Really nice. Pretty chunky. Big yeah. fish, to be honest. Yeah. Do you want a photo of that one no. in the water? I don't know. I don't know. That's so pretty, hey? Yeah. Just gorgeous, gorgeous hey? Okay. Just got it. Yep, yeah, here we go. <laughs> Ready, yeah. let's do it. Gorgeous. Yeah. Well, guys, after that fish uh, refused my green drake twice, um, I said, okay, time to go caddis dropper. And um, yeah, I was expecting actually that fish because he's doing so much cruising um, in the deeper water to probably take the dropper nymph. But no uh, surprise of all surprise, um, when I actually cast up to him, I did feel like I was probably about a foot short because he was start, he just kept cruising and cruising and I was just trying to get enough line out and get a cast on the water. And I, yeah, I, I was a foot short for sure. But again, he was, he wanted to turn around and take the caddis. So <laughs> I was okay with that, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, interestingly enough, that green drake pattern it has, because of the way it sits, sometimes when it lands, unless you have a really gentle land, which I think my first two weren't as gentle as they could have been, um, it had a bit of a plop factor. I don't think he liked that. I personally think, again, that's why he had all the time in the world at the back end of this pool um, to come and look. And that's why I got those refusals. Um, in different water, you know, maybe if I was fishing to him, at the drop-off zone up in here with that green drake, sure, I might have gotten an eat, but uh, but no, um, you can see with this pool, get up close. You know, he was doing these big long cycles, rising across the way quite a bit on the far side of the seam, and then cruising down and around. And yeah, we had this little patch of detritus as our as our point where Dave could get the best uh you know vision through the camera on the fish and the best rise and yeah hey you gotta love it when it turns into a dry fly eat and you don't expect it well here we are this creek is officially one rod length wide so you know there's not a lot of water kicking around here and the fish have to be where they have to be and that's going to be, like Amelia says, in that water that has those vermiculations on the surface or attached to it. That's that current seams. And if you have that with overhead cover, uh, broken, broken surface, riffle, kind of into that waist deep shoulder depth, you're going to have a fish. And if there's a piece of wood around, even better. But even in a run like this up here, I'm just looking, just seeing if anybody's just along the edges in the rocks they can't hide they just simply can't hide it's like picking off easter eggs in a soccer field you know you're gonna see them yeah it, the, all this gravel shifted from last summer and really looking this is a place where they would have to be moving and have to be on a rock and what was that? Oh, that's a Sally. Yeah. So you'd think they'd be here. If they're gonna be here, they're gonna be active. Fast water and really turbulent. You look across, nothing. Look on inside here, all the way through here, right along this seam is where you're looking. Never ignoring your peripheral across 
along that log, right? But this is your prime stuff right here uh, for your active active fish. And I ain't seeing nothing. You couldn't miss it because it would have to be active. Has to be. Well, you have to have an absolute sense of humor in life. Um, we've been up here, we've only fished this creek for a couple few years. And every time, somehow magically, it's Amelia's turn, just in a sequence of rotating fish. And, you know, that's just how it goes. And <laughs> even last summer, uh, we had a friend of ours come down and same time, actually another week later in the season, and this pool was just like, there had to be seven or eight really nice 18, 19 inch cuts and cut bows. Sorry, there's a wasp, I'm kind of allergic. Um, and every other time there's been two to six fish for Amelia to work and she always has fun. I've actually never had the chance just to have a go. And this whole day for the last, I don't know what the heck time is it right now, uh, quarter to five, the gr we're coming through the riffles downstream and the green drakes are starting at 4.30 and I'm going, yes, it's, and, and, and nothing, and it's still my turn. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the fish, the harlequin duck pool, wicked. And we get up here and through here, the water's so incredibly low and slow and clear there's not a single fish in here <laughs> so you know there's luck and then there's luck and then there's what this is but that's how it goes you know you can always dream and you always hope but even you know even when you think for sure a it happens to absolutely everybody your hopes your visions your mind's eye kicks in and then reality goes Haha. oh well i am going to prospect this though yeah. uh, won't be able to see so much into it but at least maybe somebody shows yeah you know just at least get it in there and there he is yep yeah oh no had to be there there we go wicked nice little fish Okay, and it's and rolling. Down through the yeah. Oh, is he gonna eat that one? Or is that one? No. The other thing is, oh there, watch that on the seam. See he's not coming. There he is. Oh, he yeah, he will eat on the seam. And right back out. Okay, so on the so seam, on the inside seam. seam. Yeah, just just on the outside of these little pine needles and stuff. And we'll just see, because he just showed that he's willing, right? Yeah. You just tell me when you think you're there. Okay. Up? Yeah, he just ate right here. Okay, so we got a green drake hatch just starting. There's, um, well, not just starting. It's actually been going for a little bit. And there's this guy that's been going left and right off the off the drop off here. And I've just got a little poly wing uh, emerger on. Are you ready, love? Okay, I'm just going to do a kind of a upstream mend to compensate for this. And we'll just put that there on the drop-off zone. Will he eat it? Didn't want it. That's amazing. How about this? He's been following right out to the tail out, but it's just a matter of where. Right? Right in that stuff. He's been way over, and then not, and then here, and then not, and then I want him to be right here. But he ain't coming on it, I'll tell you that. He might not want this pattern. Little man. See, he's over there, there. Okay, you little bugger, I gotta go another foot over. Let's do a little mini reach here. Right in there. There, that's the spot. If he's going to eat that, yes, he is. <laughs> left and right and left and right. When he finally showed, it was like, yeah, he's going to be right there. <laughs> yeah. Oof. Nice. Nice little cut. Yeah. Right in the beak, eh? Woo! Now, come on now. Ah! This is how you lose him on 5X. Step too close to him. And you push him into the current. And they schnapples you. Come on, low as can. Alrighty, do the little kite thing. Round and round and round. Come on, keep it on the surface and in the basket. Wicked! Yeah, it is. 
really nice. It's going to be a tough one for both of us, but... It is, isn't it? I'm going to try yeah. to not overshoot it, but at the same time get a cast in there, you know? Yeah, you're okay. going to catch the fish. It's, whoa, yeah. see that? Great. Yeah. Way over. Sure I did. don't have him right now. No worries. I think he's home now. Yeah, he's back home. I was going to cut out just, just a little bit that. wider on that because it's such crazy water. Yeah, hey? And I don't have him suddenly. No worries. That's tough water, to be honest, to film in. It really is. Yeah. Oh, you didn't need easy. that break? No. Oh, that was too far out. Here comes another one. Oh yeah, he'll eat that, Dave. Beauty, just so beauty. Put it right there. <laughs> okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay. You got me there, Dave. It's no. Perfect spot. It's yeah. coming into the zone. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> that was gorgeous. So gentle, hey? Oh, and here he goes, screamy, screamy, screamy. Screamy, screamy. No, not too bad. He's not that screamy, but he's screamy. Funny, hey? Yeah, it is. Beautiful. It's chunky, way chunkier than I actually had it as being, to be honest. Beautiful, beautiful. Hey, hey, I like that. I fed it to him. <laughs> well, that was a really cool fish, guys. Just from the perspective, really easy fish again, you know. Um, he was going to eat whatever was coming through his zone, and I didn't have a far cast at all. Um, I think I had maybe three feet of fly line out of my fly rod. Yeah, it wasn't much. And yeah, just nicely delicate. Fed it to him. He was coming to eat. Beautiful spot. So cool where rocks get wedged in these big, you know, chunks of stumps. <laughs> Looks like the eyeball actually to a critter. I <laughs> love it. All right, so a sight fisher's nightmare. The wind is picked up. You got smoke in the air that fills the gaps between broken cloud. And now we got a tall set of uh, stand of trees over here and the sun's over there. Shade, in and out light, glare, wind, ha! Okay, so what you're looking at now is basically a prospecting game. And I'm gonna walk up here and I'm probably gonna use my caddis. Uh, as a real smart guy, I would probably put a dropper nymph on, but I like dry fly. And for as many fish as are in here and as low and clear the river is, they should respond. If there's one, two, or fish, yeah one or two fish in here it should respond to the caddis why because amelia's last three fish in a row have gone all rippy the gator on caddis so hopefully they do the same for me it is amazing how quickly the light is changing and the wind everything so fast and looking up in here and the best case for me would be if the wind died and the cloud came in, so I didn't have the glare, because that high, high, heavy contrast of sun to, well, shade is brutal. And add wind, eesh, not your best friend when you're trying to do this. Sighting game. Look at that, as soon as that wind dies down, now you're looking upstream for rises, anything happening. And then you also get to go, okay, there's a bit of, bit of depth over here and now you start to go hmm and now you can start to look in here and if you look out in here um, 
you should start to see any movement that's there because you're now you're into that um, backdrop that darker backdrop of the trees and that's really helpful I'll prospect the back end just in case right right in there just to see you think you'd see any movement but the other thing to consider is this it's going to be an eddy going this way so as I come I want to get slightly out of the water because I don't want to send a pile of dust into the pool and say hey you guys company's here right across that stuff I haven't seen a rise of you there again I haven't seen a when was the last time you saw a bug today yeah just gentle you know right up on that seam along that edge of that bucket boy you'd think somebody would at least come up and look that's the neat part is if you can if you can get a fish to come up and look then you at least know that you're in the ballpark of the where once you know the where there's a lot of neat things that can happen i'm shocked so far but that's the name of the game you know, and i had a bet leading into this run how many fish we'd see i thought two or three she said one so far we're kind of both looking like chumps we didn't see a single fish when we were here a month ago either though i'm seeing nothing for movement and if it's going to be here it's going to be right off this shelf right where i just cast everything we've seen today has been active and willing and nothing is doing here well, we've got another spot here guys where you know it is worth a prospect um Gonna start in a little short on the seam. Maybe not quite that short, but yeah, it is worth a few casts just simply because it's slightly faster water and you don't know where you might just be missing seeing one. I doubt that we are missing seeing it, but it's always worth a drift or two. Cool. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. See, just like that guys. <laughs> Again, follow that dry fly and do a few casts because I didn't see that fish. He's not a big fish by any means. Um, but yeah, maybe 10, 12 incher, not even 10 incher, but yeah, he had to be there. Come on, bud. Over you come. Okay. Maybe I lied. Maybe he's more like 13. That's fun. Beautiful though. And chunky, chunkier than I'm giving it credit for, to be honest. Okay, come on. Just easier, don't have to put this fish in the net, but honestly, when it comes to handling a cutthroat that wants to flop about, yeah, what am I smoking? He's probably 14, 14. Nice fish. <laughs> That's fun. Again, it's worth a prospect because this water has just a little bit more of a push on top and that makes it so that those uh, those bigger rocks out in here where you can see I'm pointing, they, they get to look a little fuzzy and you can't see everything that's holding on top broken of them. Rock, eh? Yeah, broken yeah. rock. Even with that wind, mm -hmm. you should now see in that light. Ah, it's terrible wind. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? There might be one right there. Right in the center. No, I got it. No. I like the I like it without the sun better to be honest with you. That's the funniest part about this. Now I'm just gonna prospect this. Because Yeah, it's just it looks good. Okay, well, let's try this. Just up the seam. Different water than you caught your last fish, eh? Yeah, it is. Just oh, look, oh right there. Oh, geez. Yeah, you were watching. That. I was you had already... no, I was already looking ahead. And that's exactly how mine happened. Oh, is that amazing? <laughs> that's excellent. Oh man, that's a good fish. Yeah. He was sitting in the likely bucket, that's for sure. 
<laughs> That's funny, Dave. Well, sorry, Thought Lyle. I was watching your slide. Good thing you were. Come on, little buddy. Come on, little buddy. It's good fish. It is. Honestly. Shockingly so. Nice. Gorgeous fish. Stunner. <laughs> yeah, those are the spots, right? Yeah, they are. You can't, you have to prospect that. I couldn't see that. Not with that glare, not with that light, not with all that stuff right. going against us. Yeah. Hey guys, well, I tried my best and that fish at the start of the day, that button hooked and ate my nymph coming straight at me. Well, you know, that cost me the day because you know, I, I, I know what my wife's going to say. Yeah. yeah. So I, well, I think we both had a pretty good streak yeah. today. All, you know, most fish we lined up on, hey, yeah. we caught them. I was you know? five on six and you were <laughs> five on five. five. Yeah. Yep. All, I think yours all took dry fly though. Oh, they did. Yeah. I got so lucky She made me that. took yeah. the fish, the first one and forced me to eat <laughs> nymph fish. Yeah. yeah. No. It's, <laughs> yeah, that no, was a lot yeah. of fun. A lot of fun, right? You know, that's the thing that can happen with, with a cutthroat trout or a cutthroat rainbow trout stream. Um, you know, you just find those slots, you guys. You find those deeper troughs, especially when the water's super low like this. Yeah. And that's what we worked. And hey, we had some success, you know. Yeah, and I've just been bearing through it because this water, yeah. this water is damn cold. Oh, it is. And it's with cold. That front coming in. Oh, yeah. yeah the temperatures drop, and we're gonna get some rain tonight. <laughs> and if we get yeah. some rain tonight, uh, hopefully that means we can go brown trout fishing in in, in the rain. In the in the hatches tomorrow excited about that but hey yep. today was awesome i had oh, a lot of yeah. fun with you and you know we got a about an hour and 15 minute walk and then a half hour bike ride and then a half hour drive home and that's you know it's a good a day, day. Yeah. yeah absolutely yeah. <laughs> all right we'll catch you next time guys thanks for stopping by our channel is that a chicken